Hello everyone, my name is Rick Jansen. Welcome to my fly bench. I have a very special fly for you today. Back in the early 1980s, when I first got serious about fly fishing, I came across a little fly called the Black Martinez. I bought a couple of them, not remembering where, took them into the interior lakes and they were wonderfully productive for me. Since then, I couldn't find the fly for sale anywhere. So that's what got me into fly time. I needed more of this fly in my box, and I was determined to get some, even if I had to tie my own. In the 40 years since, this fly has evolved like most flies, and some new materials are incorporated, but it still incorporates the same salient features, which makes it so attractive to trout, especially in those tannin-colored lakes where there's some distinct drop-offs. I call it the new Black Martinez. Let's take a look at the materials you're going to need to tie it. Alright everybody, into the vise I have here a Togan's number 14 uh, 2x long curved nymph hook and to that I've added a 764 black uh, matte black bead. I often tie this fly in number 16's but for the sake of the camera I wanted to make it a little bigger for uh, us and, and I don't mind having a few of the larger ones in the bag in the box as well. So here we go, I'm going to attach my uh, 6 aught black tying thread in behind the bead here and we'll get that tag end cut off and the first item to come in will be our tail so I'm going to get that thread right back to between the point and the barb of the hook let it hang there yep that's about it that's about it there now guinea fowl I'm using guinea fowl you could use grizzly hackle as well but if you're going to go with guinea fowl I want to point out that there's a difference in the guinea fowl there uh, some feathers have the larger spots with little or no mottling in the black areas. And those are great for like Doc Spratleys and some of the other flies that we tie. But uh, for this particular fly, a smaller fly, I like the ones with the smaller dots and more mottling between the, uh, between the dots. You can see the difference there. So that's what I'm going for. If you're buying a package of guinea fowl feathers for these smaller flies, I sel I'd select the ones with the smaller dots. Again, I just need uh, about you know, six or eight fibers there to create a tail. Not too many. You just want that uh, uh, t tail to, to be visible there. And I like to, to uh, there's an arc to the feathers, and I like to do them with the uh, arc slightly up. And the tail isn't too long on this fly. It's a little less than shaft length. So I just get that bound in there. There we go. We just want to have that there, and then we're going to bring the thread forward to about the halfway point on the hook and just bind down those butt ends a little bit more to really secure that tail in there. Now that we've got that tail well, well secured, we'll cut off the tag ends there. And we're going to come in with our small green copper wire. I like green. Uh, this The Black Martinez, the original, was often tied with copper, uh, the natural copper color, or, uh, or some other silver. Uh, wire, but uh, I like to keep the uh, color scheme consistent on my this particular fly and uh, the green goes well with the flashback that we're going to put on there and uh, with the uh, the dubbing, the semi-seal dubbing we're going to put in for the thorax. So just binding that uh, wire on my side of the hook and bringing it back to the tie-in point of the tail there. There we go. Now our first dubbing is uh, seal fur. If this is a natural dubbing uh, in black. The key about this one, whatever dubbing you use, I would go with a short fiber dubbing. It has to be short fiber for these uh, abdomen, this abdomen portion of the fly. So I'm just waxing my thread there a little bit. I'm going to cut, cut off a small tuft of my dubbing from the hide. 
There we go. And we just start dubbing that up. And it's, again, it's a short fiber dubbing made so that you can build the taper on this fly really nicely. You need to, you need to keep that tail end, the butt end of the fly, narrow and small and build up nicely to the thorax region of the fly there. So we're getting that in there. A nice buggy, soft, fuzzy abdomen section that isn't too big. And I might need just a touch more. Get that added on there. It's a very simple fly to tie, but uh, extremely effective in those lakes with an LJ bloom or if it's tannin colored. Uh, I found it very effective to cast and strip this over the uh, over drop-offs or sunken islands uh, with an intermediate sink line and uh, it's such a buggy looking fly that's what attracted it to me in the first place. So we're going with Green Wire Hero just about three wraps. Two, three, and bring it up here. We're going to secure that in there with a couple of wraps behind and a couple in front one behind and one in front and then I like to pull down taut on the bobbin as I helicopter that wire out of there. Keep it tight and then what happens is it breaks off nicely under the thread wraps. Now our uh, flashback material I'm using laser wrap. Uh, it could be uh, uh, and it's a chartreuse green and uh, it could be it's got other names it goes by but it's the same uh, material used for like handlebar flies in the pink for for salmon and uh, this is the chartreuse green so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that in and give it a, a taper there by snipping uh, little little corners off it just like that and we try to get it to a, a nice point it'll just ease the tie into that there we go, get a little point on there. And what I do is I kind of favor toward my side of the hook here because the torque of the thread will bring it on top. So there we go, I've got that secured and I'm going to bring it back into the dubbing so it's well, well set in there. Now bring the thread forward to the bead because this we're going to tie up, bring a dubbing, create a dubbing loop. Now I'm using my finger to create a dubbing loop and the fill rolly method, I'm going to wrap it once there, then bring it on top, and then wrap that dubbing loop back to my starting point, so I close the end of that loop there, and then bring that thread forward. Now that I've got the dubbing loop formed, I'm going to attach my dubbing needle to the end of it, and start inserting a little bit of the uh, Arizona Simi Seal in the Black Peacock. This is Black Peacock. Simi seal. It's got a touch of green to it. Goes with the with the green on the wire and the green in the flashback. I'm just using the tiniest tufts here. I'll bring that in there, and uh, hopefully my bobbin and noodle don't tangle too much there as I let it hang, so I can add some more. Bring that up there. And now we're going to give that a twist. Now we don't need a whole lot. It creates that nice bulky and buggy thorax region of the fly. You can see I can get that noodle all spread out there. Now we're going to bring that around. And as we do, I like to stroke the long fibers back and down. Just keep them wrapped back and down. Again, I don't need a lot of the semi seal. It comes in a small package. It's fairly expensive. But uh, it's wonderful. It's, it's got a lot of volume to it for the amount you get. Now you get that buggy look. You see that? I'm bringing in right in behind the bead there. Now I'm going to tie off my dubbing loop. Make sure it's well secured before cutting off this tag end. And the next to final thing is I'm going to again bring those fibers down and back. Bring that laser wrap forward. We're going to secure that in behind the bead there with a couple of wraps and then cinch down on it nice and tight. And I want to again position it right on top of the hook. I don't want it cocking off to one side or anything like that. And once I've got that well cinched in there, 
can cut off the excess material. Now don't worry about, now I want a little bit sticking forward of the thread wraps there because I don't want it to slip out behind. And so we'll deal with the color of that in just a moment with the Sharpie. A couple of more wraps like that and uh, we come in with some Sally Hansons for cementing the thread into the head there. A couple of drops there on the on the thread. Wrap that in there securely. We'll take our whip finish tool and uh, give it a four or five turn whip finish to complete the tying portion of the fly. Two, three, four. Zip that out of there. Okay, I went and did something wrong there. Caught myself up. And that's, you know, that's the thing, eh? <laughs> Get good at this whip finish tool and then you're gonna still botch it for the camera. There we go, we got that whip finish down tight. Gonna nip that excess thread off. And this is where we come in with our Sharpie. And we just color up that tag end so it blends in with that matte black bead and the black thread there. It just kind of disappears in the black Sharpie. Make sure you get all the edges of it. I just, it's fussy, the, probably the trout don't care, but I like it to look neat and tidy. And the final thing is, I've got some very long fibers to this Arizona Simi Seal, so I'm just going to take some of those unruly long ones and trim them to proportion on the fly. I'm going to turn the fly in the vise and just look at it from all angles and, turn, and, uh, and give it a bit of a trim. No, nothing too much. I want to keep those those long fibers on the front, that's what really makes this fly alive, come alive in the water, because as you're stripping up, up those drop-offs, they pulse and crawl, they make it look like this critter's crawling up the bank. And trout don't seem to be able to resist that, that movement. So there you have the blue, new Black Martinez. Uh, really good producer in some of those interior lakes and on the coastal lakes that I fish now on the island too. Uh, the keys are that short fiber dubbing at the back, at the rear of the fly for the abdomen, and then the long fiber Arizona semi seal for the thorax region of the fly to give it those legs and that bushy, buggy look. I hope you enjoyed this fly and uh, you find a, a have a lot of fun tying it. I, I know I do. Uh, it always brings me back to the early 80s when I first started fishing it. And I'm wishing you the best of luck on the water next season. Good luck, and if you consider uh, subscribing to my channel, you know it's free, it doesn't cost you a penny, and you can hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and then share this video with any of your friends. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.